Hey, welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about peace, while we take a look at the story of two guys who had to make peace through a tough situation. Yes! In your face, game. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I win, I win, you lose. Ha. Um, maybe don't try that at home. Hey guys, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. This week, we're talking about peace, which is proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. Not that we ever argue. Of course not. Psh. Anyway, ready for today's experiment? You know it. So today, we're turning Coming fire different robot. colors. What? My this was my week. No way, I checked the calendar. Yeah, but we changed it. Remember that whole conversation? Coding is way cooler. Than fire? I think not. Coding. Fire. Coding. Fire. Coding. Fire. Coding. 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 There's only one way to settle this. Black paper, scissors, shoot. Yes. Yes, now you will be the robot and I will code you. Nope. But I won. We'll do your experiment, but I want to be the coder. Fine. Be my guest. I kind of sort of need you to tell me what we're doing with the whole coding thing. So glad you asked. So, have you ever played a game where you have to press a button to attack or jump? You just described about 99% of all video games, so yeah. Well, that jump is thanks to a little thing called code. Code is like the brains of a computer. Whether it's a tablet or a robot, the code tells the computer what to do. See this jump? Yeah. Well, this is all the code that is needed for this jump. Whoa, it takes all of this for one little hop? Yep, computer brains need super specific instructions for every single action in a game. That's actually very cool. Then, let's do it. Today's experiment is called Robot, Make Me a Sandwich. You need to look the part. I will now create the code for Sebastian Robot to make a sandwich. For this experiment, you'll need a loaf of bread, a jar of peanut butter, a jar of jelly, a butter knife, one friend, and a blindfold. Of course. You know, I have to depend on you for the right instructions, just like the way a computer or robot depends on the right code. <laughs> Sebastian Bot is ready to roll. Okay, um, Sebastian Bot, walk to the table. Error. Say please. But. Robots don't, fine. Please walk to the table. Error, table not found. Okay, um, please walk forward. Oh. I should have clarified. Okay, uh, please walk three steps. Okay. Put out your right hand, little less. And grab the peanut butter. Not the bread. Um, I do not know peanut butter. Feel around for a lid. <laughs> Unscrew the top. Now, spread the peanut butter on the bread. Please confirm instruction. Please spread the peanut butter on the bread. Okay. I do not know. Nice. Then why didn't you take the bread out of the bag? Sebastian Bot does not know. Bread bag. Ah! Hey, you can't get mad at a robot. It's just doing what you told it to do. Yeah! Sorry. Maybe I need some time to work on this and cool down. I think it's a great idea. In the meantime, it's time for. The story before the story. Today, we're in the book of Genesis, which tells us how God created the entire amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. From the beginning, God had a plan to draw people back into relationship. God chose a man named Abram and promised to bless the whole world through Abram and his family, making them more numerous than the stars. Abram trusted God. 
he and his wife Sarai and his nephew Lot left behind everything they knew. Together, they ventured to the brand new land where God had called them. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. Ever play one of those choose your own adventure games? Well, today's story is about two guys who made some tough choices. Ready to play? In the new land where God had called them, Abram and Lot did well and gained sheep and livestock. Those flocks and herds began to grow and grow and grow. Sounds great, right? But there was a big problem. The two of them had so many sheep and livestock that there wasn't enough land to go around. The shepherds and herdsmen who watched over their flocks started fighting. Hey, it's our turn for this field. Are you kidding? We were here first. Don't you bleed at me. He can bleed at whoever he wants. Instead of joining the fight, Abram took Lot aside. Listen, Lot, we shouldn't fight. And our shepherds shouldn't fight either. We're family. Isn't the whole land in front of you? Let's separate. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Uh, okay. Lot looked at his options and saw that the whole of the Jordan River Valley was filled with water and plants, perfect for all his flock and herds. Hmm. Which path would you choose? River Valley or wastelands? Yeah, I choose the valley. Well chosen, Lot. Take care. See ya, Uncle Abram. As Lot headed toward the valley, Abram went with what was left. As head of the family, Abram could have taken the best land for himself. That would have been fair. But instead, he chose to keep the peace by allowing Lot to choose first. But Abram's difficult choice was not the end of the story. As Abram stood in the new land, God spoke to him. Look around from where you are. I will give you all the land you see. I will give it forever to you and your family. Abram trusted God's promise. He traveled away from the river valley to the great trees of Mamre. There, he pitched his tent and built an altar to the Lord. By giving Lot first choice, Abram ended a fight before things got out of control. But Abram also showed that he was trusting God to take care of him, no matter what. And God was faithful to do just that. In fact, many, many years later, Jesus was born into Abram's family line, and Jesus made peace between God and us. The end. Wow, Abram had every right to take the best land. But he let go of that, not easy. Exactly. Abram cared more about his relationship with Lot than he did about getting the better land. So, what's our part in this story? Well, Abram chose to make peace and chose to let go of what was fair. We can do that too! Say your dad promised to get off work early and take you out for ice cream, but then an emergency came up at work and he had to stay. Ooh, ice cream, right where it hurts. Definitely not fair. It would be super tempting to pout about it for days and make your family miserable. But you can choose to let it go and be patient until your dad can take you a different day. Or maybe it's your turn to pick the snacks, but your mom forgot and let your little brother choose instead. It might not feel fair, but instead of getting mad, you can wait till next time so you can pick the snacks. Think about it in your activities or at school too. Yeah. I remember when I tried out for the play, I really, really wanted the lead. But when I got a smaller part, it made me want to quit because it didn't feel fair. Did you? No, and it was actually super fun. I made a lot of friends. You could have missed that. Exactly. Now, there are times when something isn't fair and needs to be made right. And you can always talk with a grown-up about that. True story. Good point. I think you've both got it. See you next time. Bye. Bye. So here's the thing. You can show you care by letting go of what's fair. I can let go of what's fair. I can't let go of lunch. Then let's finish. Rotate hands towards each other. 
until the upward facing sections of the bread touch, forming a combined structure. Rotate combined structure horizontal. And enjoy a tasty treat. With pleasure. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you next, next time. time. Want some? Don't mind if I do. Here you go. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm.